Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a woman named Anna. Anna will open up about her online relationship with a man named Henry Tony Wilson, who she met on the app Instagram. This relationship lasted around four years and there were a lot of twists and turns. Anna was constantly sending money to this man, all to never see him face to face. Real quick guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Hello, my name is Anna Cuomo. I live in Florida, and I'm talking to Social Catfish today, February 11th, 2022. I've been in Florida for 34 years. I'm a singer entertainer, but retired. And I also was a rescuer trapper of cats in my city. Right now, I'm talking to Social Catfish because I have a story to tell about my scammer. His name is Henry Tony Wilson. So when I met him, he was about 55. I looked at the phone, I looked at the picture, and I, I was intrigued. And I clicked on right away. All he said was hello. And I said, hello, do I know you? I said, uh, I don't recognize your photo. I said, but could you be one of my customers from one of my places where I used to work as a singer? And he wrote back and said, no. He says, I just saw your picture, and I just wanted to say hello and get to know you. And he told me that he was working on oil rigs for 20 years. And he, his last job was in Stockton, California. He was in America. And he was going to finish this job the end of September of 2018. He was a man of honor, integrity. He hated liars and cheaters. And he just wanted to be happy again and for someone to love him and his daughter. I had a peaceful life. No highs, no lows. Uh, I had lost my best friend in 2012. The day started to go by. We were talking more and more every day. I don't know who said it first, but I told him, and I said, and I need to, I need to see you. You have to come to Florida as soon as your, your job is finished. He says, I will. I couldn't go a day without hearing his voice. I was, I was mesmerized, hypnotized. I couldn't function. It's like I didn't want to breathe until I, I saw his name, his phone number. And I just, that's how it was. I was like a, I was hooked. I guess that time of my life, I was looking for somebody maybe in, in my subconscious and I wanted somebody, I wanted a relationship. I wanted to be with someone that was my equal or more because my whole life, I've only met men that I was always the powerful one. I was always the strong one. I was, I was always the guy because I was always the aggressor. But with him, after I initially gave him my phone number, I wasn't the aggressor. He pursued me in such a way that I had always, always wanted always wanted. I did ask for a video call. He says, um, we're not allowed to video call from the rig, and, uh, but I will do it. I will get to you soon. But by that time, I, I, I didn't even pay attention. I mean, a friend of mine had committed suicide a couple of years earlier over a scammer, and that even was blocked out of my mind. He would call me in the morning, good morning, my love, good morning, my queen, my baby. I would die for this man. I would kill for this man. I'm telling you, just like I would for my kids or anybody that I love. That's the intensity of how he made me feel. Then one day I said, look, we got a video call. And he said, I said, let's Skype. We, well, we Skype. And what was it? It was, I was so excited that day. I, I wasn't even thinking straight. I was like in another world. And the video came on Skype. And I had Skype before with my boys. So I know what a video looked like, but that day I didn't. A video came on, a small video in the middle of the screen. And it was Mark Gervais, but of course I didn't know that. I thought it was Tim. And he, I heard him say, can you see me? Can you hear me? I said, yeah, babe, I can see you. And I said, but it's, you know, grainy. I said, and, and boom, the thing went out. I said, what happened? He says, I don't know, the camera's not working properly. He says, and I got to get back to work. We'll try it another time. Okay. But then I went and did the reverse search and I found hundreds and hundreds of pictures of Mark Gervais. And I, there's some of them that were in there were the ones that Henri sent me. And I confronted him about that. I said, where the hell did this picture come from? This is Marc Gervais. This is a, a Canadian entrepreneur. He says, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do the Instagram thing. The guy in the rig did it. I said, oh, really? I said, so you let a guy put a strange picture of somebody else? I said, where, what about your picture? I want to see you. So as it went on, then in September, when he was supposed to get off the rig, all of a sudden, there was a problem. A part broke. I helped him with his guy supposedly that had to get off the had to get on a chopper and get back on land to go home. I helped him with that because the chopper they needed money for the chopper. I helped him with two passports. 
He said his two guys, their passports had expired. They couldn't go back home. I helped him with that. And I got I got my roommate involved. We did a loan and I did one. But it kept going and, and I just he just kept me going. He would come back and say, Now I can't leave because the agent that had my papers, he had an accident on the rig. He fell into the water and all my papers were in the briefcase. It tells me that the landlord where he's staying wanted eleven thousand dollars because the agent, Mr. Perry, on the rig was supposed to have handled all that. And Henri said, I didn't know anything about that. I can't get my account. My account is frozen, the Royal Bank of Scotland. He showed me that account. I think it was like $140 million that he had achieved over the 20 year period. Okay, I could believe that, you know, if you're not going any place, you're just working like that. And he, he was going to retire. I said, okay, you know what? Give me the address where you're staying. I need to go and see you. If we can't Skype and we, you can't do a video call, you can't do a, a on a phone, something is radically wrong. You have to believe me. Why don't you trust me? You don't, that's your problem. He always said that, that's your problem. You don't trust me. I said, even the letter the landlord wrote, that's not, a, that's not a proper letter. That's a fake. It's a fraud. The letter from the company. His check was staying with the company, with the Shell Oil Company, I believe it was, until he came home to me because that was the instructions he gave them. And then the phone calls started to get break down. Then his phone broke. Then he had no phone. Guess what? I sent him a phone. And you know where the phone wound up? <laughs> Nigeria. He takes no blame for that. He said that it was stolen, that they used the wrong person. From 2019 on, it got progressively worse. No phone. Then I sent another phone, a cheap one. He went crazy. He said, you have humiliated and embarrassed me. How could you do this to me? It wound up with some woman in Arizona. I got all the information. I have receipts. I have names of people, agents supposedly from wires I sent. I have all of that, which I will divulge to the uh, proper authorities. And I got in touch with this woman because I told her, I said, do you know you're involved with a scammer? Because she gave me another guy's name. The first letter I wrote her, I said, I'm going to contact the FBI. I'm going to give you a name, address and everything. And you're going to wind up in jail because I think you're a mule. And she's Spanish. I guess an older woman in her 60s, scared. So she wrote me back and she says, why did you threaten me? I said, I didn't mean to threaten you. I said, but I want information. I want the truth. Where did that phone go? And uh, that phone, the second one, went to Austria. It took weeks to get come back, but it did come back. And the woman did mail me the phone back. The third time was the last time I said to him, I'm going to send this phone in good faith. He says, I know what you you have trust issues with me and I know you need to see me and you will. So I sent the freaking phone. And what happened? Nothing. He said he had to wait to get it set up. He had to pay to get it set up. I said, that's bullshit too. I said, you're lying to me. He says, I would never lie to you. I said, yes, you are. He had excuses for everything. He, it was never his fault. I was distrusting my heart. If you could see it in your hand is totally crushed, devastated, penetrated and bleeding every single day. Because that man promised me what I always wanted. But by this time now, I'm, you know, I'm gone. I'm jaded. But I still, I didn't block him. Then he needed iTunes cards. I need medicine. I need food. I'm hungry. I maxed out all the, my six credit cards, the cash advances, and the loans. It's a substantial amount. I'm in debt for the rest of my life. That I'll have to explain to my kids someday, hopefully on my deathbed. Or maybe not at all, because that would break their hearts. Because what I did for him, I wouldn't do, for, I wouldn't even do for my own my own kids, oh my, and it makes me sad because that's that's not who I am. I'm a smart woman, smart in business, smart in helping other people. But unfortunately, my heart took over and I take full responsibility. That's another thing I need to say. I take full responsibility for my actions. I take full responsibility for my, for blocking out all the red flags and for giving him every chance, every single time to prove to me that he wasn't a scammer. And that I paid very dearly for.
the money, money comes, money goes, but the emotional devastation, I can't even begin to describe to you what it's done to me, emotionally and physically. I'm reaching out to Social Catfish. I love you guys. I think what you're doing is great for people. And uh, maybe you guys in some way, by, by talking about all of this today, can get that monstrous little devil off my shoulder that he's ever going to show up. But if I could have found him, oh my God, believe me, nothing would stop me from killing him. Nothing. If the phone was to ring right now, you know what I would do? I say I'm not going to answer it, but I would pick it up. I would answer it. I'm not done yet. I'm not done with him. That's, what, that's all I can say. I'm not done. Anna had been on an emotional roller coaster after meeting Henry back in 2018. We vetted all the information that she had sent us and agreed that she had been romance scammed by a fake profile. She did a reverse image search to find the real man in the photos and found out his name was Mark Garvis, a French motivational speaker and entrepreneur. And the face that I, he had given me and the photos he had sent me, that's who I was in love with. I mean, I put the photos all over my apartment and it turned out to be Mark Gervais a French Canadian uh, entrepreneur from Canada, who I now uh, am in contact with <laughs> as a fan of his, with his books and his uh, uh, his um, Zoom conventions. I love the guy. I think he's a great uh, human being. If you're looking to verify your online lover, the first step would be to use the tools on our site. You can click the link in our bio and check them out. Just hitting like, comment, and subscribe helps us build more tools out for you to use in the future. We decided to sit down with Anna to commend her for sharing her story and ask some deeper questions about the scammer she was still in contact with. Oh, hey, how's it going, Anna? Hi, Anna. This is Brienne. Hi, Brienne. Nice to meet you, too. You had done the majority of your own research and you had found out so much about this person. What was the reason why you felt that the need to continue to send the money? Uh, he was a drug. I was possessed. I can't, I can't think of any other adjective. Uh, I mean, because I'm generally a very, uh, you know, I've lived my life, I've had relationships. I mean, I've been burnt a lot, but I always rebounded. And uh, I just, he did and said everything that I wanted to hear and wanted to have and that he was going to give me. And I just kept giving him chance after chance. And I, I was, I was insane. I was out of my, I was out of my head. So you mentioned that you found the real guy, you found the real man in the pictures and you know that the person that you're talking to isn't who he claimed to be. So what would it take for you to stop talking to him? Like what, at what point are the lies too much for you to continue your correspondence and your, relationship with him I think that he he does in some way have feelings for me otherwise once the money train stops what 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 point what need does he have to have with me because I told him I said you're not getting that you're not getting nothing from me nothing not anymore I, I've told him that repeatedly but I did send one last thing because he promised me again I said, this is your last shot. I said, the only reason I'm doing this is because my goddamn curiosity is killing me. And it's not for you, it's for me. I'll send that, get your plane ticket, pay the utility bills, whatever it is, you, who, whoever you owe, which I feel is all bullshit, all of it. I would mm -hmm. never lie to you. He always said to me, I have never, ever lied to you. I sent you this stuff. I sent him some things that uh, he wrote for Valentine's Day. I mean, he knows how to cut me off, then come back in, cut me off, then come back in. And he knows that it makes me crazy because I want closure. I want this over, but do I still have feelings? Would you still love this person if you knew who he was? I can't answer that. Not right now. I'd have to meet him in person. I'd have to see him and I'd have to ask him why and hear his answers and then look at him and see whether I don't know. If he is a scammer with ill intentions and he's never going to give you the closure of, of that, that finality of knowing for certain if he is who he says he is, how do you plan on moving on if he plans on keeping you, keep stringing you along and asking you to take out loans and- Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that ended. 
never. That will never happen again. That part of me is clear. No, never. I just want to keep talking to him. But the thing is, Brienne, mm -hmm. I can I can hear his voice in my head. I can mm -hmm. hear his voice in my ears. I can hear every word he said to me in the beginning and, and the mm -hmm. ensuing months and then during the year and up until this point and every time that he sees me going, you know, further away, he pulls me back in. We've done this for so long and we see what behind the scenes are with these scammers. And so they are talking to multiple Annas. Yeah, they they hide behind these images and just the the connection that you have with him is not the connection that he has with you. His connection with you is based off of financial gain. Of and the minute you cut him off, the minute you stop giving him money, he's going to be gone out of your life. You mentioned that the first time you sent money was a couple months after you initially started talking. And now you mentioned that you're not going to send money to him anymore. But my question is, if he waited that long, how can you ever be sure that his motives aren't just money and he actually enjoys the conversation? Like, when do you think it's time to say I'm done and walk away from the situation completely? Would you be willing to do that? Yeah. Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> what choice do I have? I'm not going to be I'm not going to be spending the rest of my life uh, drooling over a phantom. So the question is, would you rather would you be willing to do that today? Would you be willing to walk away from the situation now with all the research that we have? And now that we know that he's not who he says he is, would you be willing to call him and call it a quits right now? My options are honestly, I will end it. Well, mm. I haven't. I mean, it, it, it never began. So it's. So what's to end? I won't get the closure that I want, and I have to just live with that. That's all. You know, mm -hmm. my curiosity, I'll have to stifle that and say, you know, this is a, a, a learning experience, a very te terrible, miserable, emotionally, mm -hmm. emotionally devastating to my heart experience. It seems like the only way to fully step away from the situation would be to block him, because it seems as though he has a hold on you and he'll forever have that hold on you as long as he knows how to contact you. So, Brienne, would you recommend that she steps away from the situation? Anna, how do you feel about getting to the place where you can be, you can feel okay and walk away and begin your life again? Are you guys intimating to me today that you want me to block him today <laughs> because Mm. Yes, that's exactly I, I mean, I, I've been doing this a long time, Anna, and I do always highly encourage the people that I am working with. I just always end up highly encouraging them to block and walk away from that person because this person is a toxic person. It's like just having this dead weight or this negative energy that's still looming over you. Yeah, I know. You know, and the only way to get rid of that is to just walk away from that person. And Anna, do you believe that there's a real man out there for you who you can really be with and who won't string you along and ask you for money like this? And what if you meeting that person can't happen if you're talking to Henry? No, at this stage of my life, I don't. I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. No. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm okay with that. If I have to be alone for the rest of my life, look, I'm not a spring chicken, okay? You guys know that. Mm -hmm. But I'm very healthy, I'm strong, I'm mm -hmm. independent in my way. I'll be okay. Maybe this is the universe telling me, has been telling me, that I'm destined not to be with anybody anymore. I had a full life. I want it, but if I'm destined not to have it, fine. I'm not going to go out searching. I'm not going to go on any dating sites. I've tried that. I'm not doing any of that shit anymore. I'm done. I'll be fine. I have my family. I have my friends. I have, I have my life. I have my partner. I have my animals. I can volunteer at a shelter. I can go back to trapping. I t no. So I'll do that. I'll block him. I'll tell you I'm going to block him. Let me call. More importantly, we want you to do it for you because we want you to be 
all right, and we understand that this manipulative person having, having control over you is really, really bad for your overall well-being. I allowed it. I wanted it. I respect that you've been so honest and open, Anna, and I think it's very brave of you to share your story with us, and I commend you for doing this. Thank you, but Bri Brianne, I'm not brave. I'm doing this because I don't want, I want to help, I want to contribute. Mm -hmm. That I feel that things that I said that I told Drew in the first interview, uh, mm -hmm. what he did, uh, the payments, uh, paying for choppers, paying for this, paying for that, that's all BS. And that maybe some women don't know about that, that are involved with right. the scam of faces on a rig, that maybe they hadn't heard that. So that's all. Mm -hmm. I'm not brave. No, I came forward because I felt it was the right thing to do. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Scams come in so many different forms. If you have been a victim of any of the scams below, please email us at sharemystory at socialcatfish.com. We'll get to the bottom of it with help from our Social Catfish team. By sharing your story with our YouTube audience, we can educate, spread awareness, and maybe someday we can put an end to these scams.